Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who meets us here in this place. And Lord, we ask that as we look to your word once again, may your spirit guide and lead us here in this place to see you a little bit more clearly. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you say to someone you love before you go away for a while? I remember uh, when my father, my dad, when he would leave to go on business trips, he would tell me um, the same things before he would go on that trip. He, He would tell me that, I love you. He would say, listen to your mother, which I always listened to my mother, but he was emphasizing it, especially when he was gone, and he said, be nice to your brother. And that's something that has like continued as a father now that I say to my kids, before I go away for a little while, I'll tell them that I love you, listen to your mother, which you should always do, and some mom, you can say amen to that. All right, you didn't. That's okay. And I also tell them to be kind to each other and to do their chores. These are statements that are said that, that are emphasizing something that, that we believe to be true. And today we're going to be starting a new sermon series called Before I Go. Jesus, in in John's gospel, he he teaches his disciples some distinct things before he goes to the cross. He teaches them about what does it mean to find your life or to serve or to abide or to pray. All teachings that we need to contemplate, reflect, and repent of as we continue to look at what Jesus would teach his disciples. And so today in this new sermon series, we're going to be doing that with some of the teachings of Jesus before he goes to the cross. And and it fits well because we're in this season of Lent, a season in time where we devote some time to reflect and repent to be restored, and to get ready for Easter. And so if there's one thing that I want you to get from today that we see from this first teaching that Jesus gives us in John's gospel before he goes to the cross, I want you to get this. You can write this on your sheet of paper that you were given when you came in here today, or you can write this in a text message, a note on your phone, or get ready to put it on social media. Here's the one thing that I want you to get from today is simply this. Lose your life in Jesus, and he promises that you will find it. Lose your life in Jesus, and he promises that you will. We'll find it. This teaching comes from John chapter 12. Uh, Open up your Bibles, if you haven't already, to John chapter 12 here. We see this teaching of Jesus. Jesus has uh, entered into Jerusalem, kicking off the last week of his life, and he teaches this to his disciples. There's a group of people that come to him, and it says this in verse 23. Jesus answered them, That the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you. John records this statement, truly, truly, 25 times in his gospel, in his letter. And every time he says this, he's saying that I'm about to say something really important. Our ears should perk up because Jesus is going to say something important next. And notice what he says. That unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Now, I don't have to explain this too much because I thought the children's message did a great job today of explaining this teaching to Jesus. Jesus equates himself to a grain of wheat that when he dies, like a grain of wheat that would die, it would blossom into a field of wheat. 
And Jesus' death and resurrection, through the death and resurrection of one person, there has been this massive growth and this good news that has spread all around the world. You're here today because Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Somebody say amen to that. That's why we're here. But then Jesus gives this next teaching that's important for us to reflect on. He says this, seems kind of strange, that whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Now, what exactly is Jesus saying here? Well, I think what he's getting at is he's saying, lose your life in Jesus, and he promises that you will find it. But at first glance, we read this and we're like, is Jesus really telling me that I need to hate my life? Is he telling me to go into this deep depression that I should just hate everything about me? I don't think that that's what Jesus is saying here. In fact, he's employing a Semitic idiom. Jesus, who is Jewish, is using this Jewish idiom that would be used in other places of Scripture. If you know what an idiom is, it's like, a, it's like a statement that is referring to something else. For example, like if I were to say that I'm biting the bullet, what I really mean by that is that I'm getting uh, something over because it's inevitable. It's not that I'm literally biting a bullet, it's that I'm going through a challenging time. Or if somebody were to come up to you and they were to say, well, I was just pulling your leg, it's not that... Like, they're literally pulling your leg because that would be weird. But instead, what it means is that I'm just joking with you. And Jesus here is employing this idiom. It's a Semitic idiom talking about this hate and love. And what the idiom is referring to is preference. What do you prefer? And what Jesus is saying here is that you should prefer God's plan, God's calling on your life, God's will in your life beyond what you prefer. He's saying here that we need to lose our life in Jesus. And he promises that you will find it. But what's also interesting about this teaching is that it's a paradox. And paradoxes are strange statements that need some unpacking. In fact, if you were to go to Google, this is the definition of a paradox. It's a seemingly absurd or self-contradictory statement or proposition that when investigated or explained may prove to be well-founded or true. Let me tell you that my hope today is that you see this teaching as well-founded and true, because this is also a paradoxical teaching of Jesus, where he is saying something that seems kind of strange at first glance. I appreciate how a guy named uh, Gerhard Ferdi, he he wrote about uh, paradoxical teachings of Jesus, and he said this. I think it's really, really true. He said, paradoxes can so easily be used to excuse rather than challenge or judge our own mediocrity, and then they become poisonous. What Ferdy is saying is that we can get to these teachings of Jesus that seem to be strange or these callings that he gives us and we just excuse them or we overlook them or we just say, well, (laughs) that's not for me. That was more something for them. And when we do that, we settle for mediocrity. But instead, we need to see the promise that comes in this teaching. That when Jesus says... Whoever loses his life and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Because we are called to lose our life in Jesus. And he promises that we will find it. But I, but I think, like, what do, you, what do you mean by loving your life too much? 
What, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to give you two like pitfalls for us here where it becomes dangerous for us, where we love our life too much. Two ways that we commonly might love our lives too much. The first one is this, I would say, of where we settle for mediocrity is that, number one, we think we know better than God. One of the ways that um, we love our lives too much is that, that we think that we know better than the God who has created everything. I mean, we, we say to God, like, well, just give me the keys. Or we say, like, well, this is all dependent upon me. Or we try to micromanage God to work how I would ultimately desire and want him to work. And that when there are good things in my life that happen, well, hey, that's because of me. Instead of what God has gifted me. This becomes dangerous for us. It becomes a pitfall. For us. Brothers and sisters, we need to lose our life in Jesus. And he promises that you will find it. Or the the second pitfall is that we just don't like God's plan. We, We prefer our own plan instead of what he has called us to do. And what happens in these situations is, is we just ignore God or, or we try to find these loopholes or we say things like, well, you know, what, what use is prayer anyways? Why do we even do prayer? Well, God tells us to do this. He tells us to come to him in prayer. Or we try to conform God to be what I want him to be instead of what he has said of himself. Brothers and sisters, lose your life in Jesus, and he promises that you will find it. I've seen this very boldly from one of my friends uh, more recently. A, um, a friend, a classmate of mine from seminary, his name is Andrew Johnson. Uh, this is a picture right here of Andrew and his wife Tiffany. Uh, Andrew and I, we, uh, we were classmates at, uh, at Concordia Seminary here in St. Louis. Um, we also worked security together for the campus, which sounds really cool. Believe me, it wasn't. We were given a badge that said, like, no weapons authorized, and a flashlight and a bunch of keys. We were just glorified door openers. That was it. That could blind you with our flashlights. But... Andrew and I, we got to know each other and talk about all kinds of things. And, and Andrew is a pastor in Manila, Iowa. He graduated from the seminary and is a pastor there. Or I guess I should say he, he was a pastor there. Because on January 19th, he posted on Facebook that uh, he was going to have to resign his call as pastor to that church in Manila, Iowa because he was placed on hospice. See, Andrew has been battling with a very aggressive form of cancer for the last five years. and He's been taking lots of experimental trials and and treatments and, and trying to just battle this cancer that is ultimately killing him. And he was placed on hospice January 19th. He's 32 years old. And And Andrew has decided in this season of life to let people in, to teach what it looks like to lose your life in Jesus. I reached out to him and asked, hey, Andrew, do you mind if we share this with our church here at Webster Gardens? And he said, sure, uh, no part of me is copywritten. But as you're going to hear, it should be. Because his words are beautiful and what we need to hear. Andrew wrote this in regards to the coming Ash Wednesday. He said, death's bad prank is to pour cold ice down the necks of modern Westerners such as myself and reveal the truth. You're not nearly as smart or efficient 
or talented or in control as you believed you were. You can't escape dying, let alone predict when it's going to strike. From dust you came, and to dust you shall return. Lose your life in Jesus. But as much as death likes to utilize uncertainty and truth as psychological torture, the promises of Christ airdrop deliverance when it's most needed. On Ash Wednesday, what we celebrated this last Wednesday, we use ashes to exhibit our finality. But we don't just smudge ashes on foreheads. That would give death the final say. The ashes are formed into a cross, reminding us promises overpower uncertainty. The divine defeats death. That's the only certainty I have right now. Jesus promises that when we lose our life in him, you will find it. And of all people who could be bitter and proclaim like, well, I don't like God's plan. And let me be very clear. Uh, following God's plan in our life doesn't mean that we don't use like cancer treatments. No, these are good gifts that God has given us. He is trusting God in that moment, but the news is coming that he doesn't want to hear, that you and I don't want to hear, that we are called to find our life in Jesus once again. And that is a calling that is true for eternity, but is a calling that is true for right now where we are at. And I know this to be true because I also see this in the life of Jesus, uh, the one that we are following, that he himself would lose his life for you and for me by going to the cross, dying, and rising again so that we could experience life now and for eternity. And so, what we're going to be doing in this sermon series is we're going to take some time for you to reflect, to reflect on that teaching that Jesus gives us. And so when you came in the church here today, you were given one of these uh, sheets of paper that has this question that is on it, And parents with with kids, there's also a question for kids to reflect on as well on the back side of this sheet of paper. But here's what I want you to reflect on here today. How would your life look different if you lost your life in Jesus?